Okay, we're going to try some text classification, and we're going to use reviews from this TripAdvisor site, and we're going to uh, get some reviews from the Grand Hyatt Fukuoka. You can see that there are 1,692 reviews here. So if we click on that, we can see some of these reviews, and we're just going to copy and paste a few of them into an Excel spreadsheet. So we'll copy it and put it into the sheet here. Okay, I think we might do it this way. Double click in here and try that. Yeah, okay. And then we'll do a cut, get another one. Now this one, when I pasted it in, it seems to have some peculiar formatting, I guess because of the space is here, but we'll see if that will cause a problem. And let's take one that's uh, only poor, find ones that are poor, take a copy of that. And then maybe here I'll try to get rid of some of the formatting here. So here I'm going to rate it as positive, neutral, or ne negative. And the second column is the review column. And we will save it as a CSV file. Okay, so we have I have loaded that file into Weka, and uh, we have two attributes, the rating and the review. And if you look at the review, the data type is nominal, and we have to change it in order to do the text processing. We have to change it to a string type. So the first thing we have to do is find the nominal to string, which is here. So we have to use that. So we have to change it to a string and we want, and this is just the last attribute that we want to work on. And Weka seems to know that. And so we just apply that. And now if we check, we can see that it's string. Okay, now the most important filter that we need for text processing is called a string to word vector. So let's find that. So that's down here and here it is string to word vector. So let's apply that. Before we apply that though, we should look at it can see that there are many options for this. We're going to basically leave it the way it is, but we don't want to apply it to the first attribute, so just to the last attribute. But there are many options here, and we could spend a long time talking about them. But I will actually, I will change this one. So we're going to change all of the words after we sort of convert them. We're going to change them to lowercase. So we're not going to have any capitalization. And I'm going to save this to a file, the result, and I'll call it Hotel Word Dictionary. Okay, and then I will click OK, and I have it, and then I can apply it. So let's apply this. And now what Weka has done is it's taken every single word in all of the text that we had. We had we copied a bunch of text, and it's taken every single word and made it into a, an attribute here. So you can see that there's how many? 228. Well, I guess it's because the first one was the class. So there's 227. There were 227 what Weka deemed as different words in that complete text file that we just created. And it sounds strange, but Weka has made a, an attribute out of each of those words. Now, why is it doing that? Why do we need to do that? Well, we're trying to work with text, but machine learning algorithms don't exactly work with text. So somehow or another, we have to convert the text into something numeric. So how, how do we do that? Well, this kind of idea was developed in the 1970s. And if we look at the result of what we've done, we can kind of understand what the idea is. So let's do that. So let's save this as, uh, let's call it, we're gonna call it a document. We're going to call it a document word matrix. So let's save that and see what that looks like. Okay, and let's open that up, that CSV file. Okay, so here it is. Now, if we go back to the original file, this was the original file, and we had how many reviews did I actually include? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I have five reviews that we're working with, and that's what we see here. We see review one, review two, review three, review four, review five. And then across the top here, we have all of our different attributes we said that we made how many attributes? New ones, we made 227 new ones. We had one from before, the positive, negative. And uh, so we have all of these attributes 
and here they are. So what we're trying to do though is we're trying to convert this in somehow into something numerical. So I want to convert this row or this review really, not this, this is already numeric, but I want to convert this text to something numeric. And actually, if you look at it, we have done that in the sense that the first row is now entirely numeric. But what does that mean to say that it's numeric or what are these numbers doing here? So, for example, here's the word again, and there's a one there, and here's against, and there's not, a, there's a zero there, and here's allowed, and there's a one here, and here's also, and there's a zero here. So what does this mean? This means that the first review had the word again in it. It didn't have the word against. It did have the word allowed. It doesn't have allowing. It doesn't have also. It doesn't have alternative. It doesn't have although. It does have and, and so on. Now, we could have changed the settings in that string to word vector filter so that this would represent how many times and occurred. But uh, the default settings, just it's just one and zero, whether it occurs or not. We could change it to maybe the word and actually occurred four times. So this might be a four. Or there are other ways that we can sort of count it. There are various uh, possibilities that we can use in that filter for how to count, but we'll just say yes or no, zero or one. But anyway, the point here is that the first review, we now have sort of encoded it as basically a vector, we call it a vector. And the second review, we have also encoded that as a vector. And the third one, we have also encoded that as a vector and so on. And so we took the textual data and we've converted it all to numbers or basically to a big matrix here. So that was our goal in doing the string to word vector, because as we said, all of the algorithms that we've learned about, they expect either numbers or possibly categorical variables. But, um, and these are actually, uh, we, we're actually treating these as categorical variables. But in any case, we have a, a numeric representation of all of the text. Now we can do all the same things that we've done before. So for example, this one, we classified it as positive. This one we classified as positive. This one is negative, I'm sorry, neutral. And this one is negative. So now we can take uh, all of this as our input data and then use it to try and predict the output data. So we might split it into training and testing. Of course, we don't really have enough data to do that here, but if we had bother to create, say, 10,000 rows, then we could certainly split it into training and testing. And then we would use some of the rows for training and then some to test. And so we have taken our textual data and now we can work with all of the algorithms or most of the algorithms that we have in Weka. Now, one issue is that actually the this one here is numeric. So that's kind of uh, restricts the algorithms that we can actually use. So we might want to convert this to nominal because many of the algorithms that we want to use in Weka look for a nominal output variable. And secondly, we want to specify that this is the class variable. And one way to do that is to go up to edit and find that, which it's here, and right click on it and you can attribute as class. You can set it as the class variable there and then click OK. And then it actually pushes it all the way down to the end. And it is a class variable. But also we want, as we suggested, we want to change it to nominal. So let's do that. So we want it's currently numeric. So let's try numeric to nominal. OK, here. And we don't want to do it to all of them. We just want to do it to the last variable, the last attribute. And so let's click OK and apply. And now it should be nominal. OK, now we can really use uh, most of the algorithms that we have. For example, we could try J48 and we could click Start. And there it's done. And it did 50-50. It didn't do very well. We don't have much data at all, so it's kind of impossible to expect anything to work very well. Uh, we could use the, uh, here we, I used percentage split, but we could use the entire training set just to get a slightly different way of doing this. And we could click Start and it gets 80% and 20. And we can see the one that it got wrong is here. And this is when 
it was supposed to be, it was zero or it was evaluated by, by us as neutral, but classifier, this particular classifier, J48, classified it as A or negative. And we could try other uh, classifiers as well. For example, random forest, try that. And that seems to get, at least for the using the entire training set, seems to work at 100%. Didn't make any errors. And we could also try, say, multilayer perceptron, which is here. And that seems to get 100%. But this is really not valid because we need a lot more data to, for this to mean to mean anything.